how to implement ISO 27001 Annex A 8.10 information deletion. Okay, we're going to go through information deletion, how you can do it, how you can implement the, this yourself. There is nothing difficult here. This is an Annex A control that builds on other Annex A controls that we've been through, specifically focusing on information deletion. Let's start off with a definition of what the standard wants and then I'm going to show you how you can do it yourself quickly, easily and very, very, very simply. So the ISO standard, it defines Annex A, Annex A 8.10 as information stored in information systems, devices or in any storage media should be deleted when no longer required. So this is very, very straightforward, right? In previous um, Annex A controls, we've been through this. We've looked at information classification. We're going to have an information classification and handling policy. The information classification and handling policy sets out what it is that we do in terms of deleting data based on its classification, okay? So there are certain things that we want to do specifically around confidential data. We want to make sure that that information is deleted. We know that deletion doesn't necessarily mean deletion in the current information age, especially when it comes to things like trying to delete data using operating system deletion techniques, okay? So first off, you're going to have an information classification and handling policy. It's going to set out the various levels that you're going to go through. We'll touch on a couple of the techniques in a moment, focusing specifically on getting rid of that data when we no longer need it. What do we mean by when we no longer need it? There is guidance for us when it comes to data protection, right? So data protection law and regulation in jurisdictions around the world, uh, specifically in Europe, the GDPR, has this very concept built into it, right? We don't keep data for longer than we need it. Data is only kept for the amount of time that we need it and that it is relevant to us. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a data asset register. Again, tutorials on data asset registers that we've been through. The basic concept is we set out the data types that we've got and we store various pieces of information around that, have decisions around that. But one of those is going to be the retention period. How long do we keep that data for? OK, so we've got our data asset register. We've set out how long we keep our data for based on our business need, based on law, based on regulation, based on the requirements that are placed upon us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to implement our processes of deletion. So this is about getting rid of that data. This is about making sure that data is no longer available when it shouldn't be. And we're going to reduce the risk of data leakage and data exposure by getting rid of that data. So we've got that information classification policy. We've set out the various uh, uh, approaches to deletion. But what are the various deletion methods that we can have? So you can look to automate or you can look to manually delete data as part of your processes. This is going to be specific to you. But what we're going to be looking at here is making sure that our information is securely destroyed. And we're going to be looking at all of our storage media. So here we're looking at things like our backups, right? We're making sure that if we're removing data and we have to remove it and we can only keep it for a certain period of time that it is removed out of our backups. We're looking at things that often get overlooked. Things that get, get overlooked are temporary files, right? Copies of files or versions of files that are no longer needed. This can be things that are system generated. This can be things that you generate yourself, right? When you're creating multiple versions of files. So temporary files, uh, version control, versions of files, making sure that we're keeping good housekeeping and we're keeping that our data uh, as relevant as it needs to be and getting rid of data that we don't need. For software, you want to consider professional deletion software, right? Professional deletion software that permanently deletes information. This is more targeted at sensitive and confidential information and confidential data, but we know that if we use an operating system, trash can or whatever it may be, recycle bin, we know that that is easily recoverable. So there are softwares out there that can do uh, overwriting uh, of disk, overwriting of data and other various techniques that are going to make sure that that data is deleted when we no longer require it. There are things that we can consider at the end of life. So we've looked at asset management, right? We've looked at secure asset disposal. We've looked at storage media and storage media disposal. Go back to those tutorials on 
tips and techniques about uh, making those devices and making those storage media safe. But we can look at things such as magnetic, magnetic erasure. We can look at things like degaussing. We can look at um, the FBH, right? The F uh, big hammer, <laughs> whacking it and smashing it, right? Um, we can look at many techniques when it comes to getting rid of that. Actually, when we're looking at secure uh, storage media and we're looking at storage media disposal, our top tip really is to engage with a professional third party company that's going to come and manage the entire life cycle of that, provide you with the evidences of that and get rid of that uh, for you. So that's a little bit more extreme on there. But we want to make sure that we're getting rid of data. The standard wants us to consider keeping records, right? We know that the standard is documentation heavy. So we're going to be looking at um, records of deletion. So when we delete data, especially if we're bulk deleting data, if we're deleting data based on client request, based on individual request under a, a right to be forgotten, for example, under GDPR, we want to keep records of that deletion. And again, that can be system records, that can be manual records, but we want to make sure that we've got records of deletion. We can include in there what other examples of records, right? Change control. So if we have a change control process and we followed our change control process when deleting and bulk deleting data, then that can act as a record for us, but we want those. What we're looking at here, the standard actually touches on is transportation of devices. Now, this again is a little bit nuanced, but it is to consider especially like return of assets. We touched on it when we looked at return of assets in asset management. The, the removal of data before a device is transported should be a consideration for you, obviously where it's appropriate and obviously where it makes sense. But remote wiping of devices, um, device wiping before that device is transported. Here you can consider sending devices back to a manufacturer under warranty. Do we want to send a device back um, under warranty to the manufacturer with all of our data on it? Probably not. So here we can consider things like factory reset. The Apple ecosystem is very good at this, right? In resetting uh, iPhones and iPads. But we're gonna look at before we transport a device, is it appropriate? Does it make sense to fully, fully remotely uh, or fully just delete the data on it? And nine times out of 10, it does, right? If you're gonna give your device to somebody that's gonna try and fix it, if it's appropriate to you and it's a hardware fault, then making sure that that data is deleted is gonna reduce your overall information security risk. So here we're looking at deletion, right? Deletion, deletion, deletion. We know that data needs to be deleted. We know that there are things that we use in our day-to-day especially in the current ecosystem of cloud environments and multiple copies of files that make this challenging. But what we're saying is we have data for a set period of time and at the end of that set period of time, we get rid of it. We delete that data and we make sure that it is expunged from our entire environment. It is a little bit nuanced as in a niche specific, right? We have covered deletion many, many times, uh, but the standard wants us to look at it specifically. So to tick this box, you've included it in some of the other controls. Just make sure that you've got data retention policies, you're meeting the data retention policies, and you can explain to an auditor what it is that you do when it comes to information deletion. Are there some mistakes that people make? Yes. Let me go through those for you. So common mistakes that we make are using operating system delete functions. We just touch on it. So relying on operating system delete, func delete functions is the biggest mistake we see. Very easy to recover, very easy to get that data back. And sending devices to charity or back to the vendor, again, can be seen as a mistake if we're not considering the information security risk and where appropriate deleting that information before it goes off. There are many, many devices, we've touched on it, that, that end up on eBay or end up as part of a charity donation where they haven't had the data fully, remi uh, fully re uh, wiped and then that device gets compromised, the data gets recovered and it creates you all kinds of challenges. And there are professionals and there are people out there specifically looking at these auction sites to get these devices to see what information that they can get back from them. So just to be aware of that. So that is ISO 27001 Annex A 8.10, information deletion, nothing for you to worry about. My name is Stuart Barker. I am the ISO 27001 Ninja, the ISO 27001 Guru, and we're working our way through the Annex A 8 technical controls. Until the next tutorial, peace out.